Hey everybody, I am Kevin Ioli at Yahoo Sports and my guest for a second day in a row, uh, a guy who crashed my Instagram live yesterday and Dana, I should tell you this, I went from about 50 people on that to 25,000 after you joined my Instagram live and the, it was great having you on there. The only bad part of it is now I have a bunch of fighters from other parts of the world who are now messaging me, wanting me to tell you that they want to fight 63 kilo fight and all these different things. They want me to send you their video. So all of a sudden I have become kind of like your assistant matchmaker. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Yeah. But I love it. You know, I love that. Uh, so many people around the world are training and, and want to fight, and I love it. It is awesome. Uh, UFC 249 is going to go on as scheduled. You said that on my Instagram live yesterday. Uh, can you uh, update us on specifically? Is it going to be in the U.S. or are you going to go international? I would assume you're going international with this. I guess the, the smart talk is, given your relationship in uh, the Emirates, uh, you're going to probably go to Abu Dhabi. But fill us in on where uh, where it might be. Yeah, I have two or three options in the United States, and I have – three or four options outside the country. So um, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Listen, the, 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 everybody's on a need-to-know basis, and nobody needs to know right now. So the, the, there's still a few details that need to uh, be worked out. Um, but I have a lot of options right now. I know the um... – you know, everybody worries about health and safety as you do. And I know Dr. Jeff Davidson and, uh, and uh, Jeff Nowitzki lead a staff that really uh, do a great job caring for your fighters. But, you know, this is a very contagious virus and it's something that people sometimes don't know they have and they pass on. I interviewed a guy yesterday who uh, trains at the lab at, uh, in Phoenix and, and he has the coronavirus and it, he got it from a 20 second interaction with somebody at a party. Uh, so my question to you is, are you going to test the people who are going to go to the show, whether it be fighters, yourself, your staff, media, ESPN people, et cetera? Yeah, health and safety isn't something that just popped up on our radar with the coronavirus. It's something that we deal with every week for the last 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, we will make sure that, you know, we take care of everybody just like we always do. I'm, uh, you know. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not giving the public and the media all kinds of information on what I'm doing. But let me say, I'm not acting like some crazy rebel out here and, you know, with the coronavirus and all this stuff. I've done everything that I've been told to do. When the government said you can only have this many people, there were only that many people. When you can only have 50 people, there were only 50 people. When it got to 10, that's a little tough for me to pull off. You know right. what I mean? So we stopped. We did everything that we were told to do. Um, I've been in quarantine in my house since last Sunday. I haven't left my house. Neither is my family. Try keeping a couple of 17 and 18 year olds at home and, and, and not, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's tough to do, but we did it. My kids have stayed home and, uh, you know, I followed all the rules, man. I've, I've done everything that, that we've been told to do, but this fight's going to happen. Uh, you know, I just don't understand your reluctance to say whether they're going to be tested because if they're going to be tested, I think people feel better about it. Yeah, yeah. The less the media knows, the better. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, you're one of the very few guys that I actually like and trust. And, uh, you know, just, let me just put it to you this way. A lot of this hysteria and all this stuff that's gone on has been driven by the media. And the, the less the media knows, the better off it is. <laughs> Listen, you've known me for a very long time. And all of my employees that work for me, you know, when my fighters are with me and my people are with me, they're getting the best medical attention they could possibly get if they were alone or if they were home or if they were, uh, you know, worked for somebody else. Everybody who, who, who's with me is going to get the best medical attention possible. And, uh, you know, the, the less the less the media and the public know you guys, you get when I say you guys take that, whatever you don't need to know. It's none of your it's none of your business. <laughs> I, I I have known you so long, Dana, that I remember you had you b had both hair and you were skinny when I knew you. So, right. uh, so that was kind of crazy. Now I'm bald and fat. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> well, if, you know, if the shoe fits, whatever. I, I I look in the mirror that way every day too. So there we go. Hey, uh, before we move on from the coronavirus, uh, did you see Conor McGregor's uh, Instagram post today? I did not. 
Connor uh, uh, made, you know, kind of, he said, I want to address my nation. So I, I think he thinks he's, uh, you know, kind of in political office. But he did address it to uh, the leaders, the political leaders in Ireland. And he called for a lockdown on Ireland and uh, basically said that we have to take this serious. And he wanted to have the entire country locked down and was, and was calling on the, uh, uh, President Higgins and uh, some of the other politicians in Ireland to lock things down. So I guess what that says to me is Connor won't be fighting anytime soon. Well, I mean, how, how long? I, I love that we did the lockdown, too. You know what I mean? I, I kept trying to keep the fights going for as long as I could. But I told you yesterday, I think that our governor of Nevada has done an incredible job. I mean, imagine having to make the decision to pull the plugs on the casinos, literally where all the revenue comes from for, for the uh, state. Right. Very tough decision to make, but the right decision. And, and yeah. you know, if you listen to the way that this thing has been going then then the governor made the right decision and and it, he made the decision way before these other some of the people are going on lockdown tomorrow today you know we've already been into this thing a week yeah then on friday he came out and said if you're still working in a non-essential business you're going to be arrested right you know just to let them know that that they're not playing so and they found 115 of them yesterday that were still open <laughs> did they really yeah holy yeah so the question becomes, how long are we going to do this? Right. How long are we really going to stay in our houses and hide? Um, I, you know, if the coronavirus is what's going to get me, then so be it. I mean, it, it is what it is. Who, heart disease, car accidents, cancer. The list goes on and on of all these things that kill people every year. One thing is guaranteed. We're all going to die of something. You know what I mean? And I'm just, I, you can't be somebody who's going to hide in your house for months. You're going to hide in your house for months for what? No way, man. Listen, I, to be honest with you, if this goes on for months, I got a great house to be locked up in, man. L let me tell you, my house was built for quarantine. We're <laughs> having a blast over here. I'm spending incredible time with my kids and my family. I have, uh, I'm doing two, three a day workouts over here. Um, you know, we're, we're doing things that we haven't done with the kids since they were little. I can do this forever if that's what everybody wants to do. But, but is this really what we're going to do? Since when do Americans run and hide in their friggin' houses instead of taking this thing head on and finding solutions? You find solutions in how do we continue to live our lives, protect the people that need to be protected. I don't think I'm a high risk guy for this thing. Maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, then the corona is going to get me. All right. It is what it is. There's nothing you can well, do. Well, I, I, would, I would just say, in all, in all due respect, you are not a coronavirus to expert. I live my life and I'm not going to hide. It, I, it, I, I don't want to fight with you on this, so I'm going to end it at this. Good. I'm just going to say, you're not. You just say I'm right. You are not a coronavirus expert, nor am I. I no. just would say, listen to the doctors, right? Yeah, but, but, but whether you're a coronavirus expert or not, it's like hiding from cancer. You can't hide from this thing. You can't hide. But I if can't get cancer from you shaking your hand. If you are a high-risk person, this thing's going to get you. What's going to happen next flu season? This thing's just going to disappear? No, it's going to come back just like the flu. And if it's if if, if it's what's going to get you, it's going to get you. So, listen, Kevin, I've had a great run, right? If the coronavirus is what's going to get me, let's do it. Bring yeah. it. I'm ready, Corona. Come, yeah. come get me. Hey, before we go, I want to talk to you about some fights. But one of the things, you know, you are in a unique position in Las Vegas here is uh, one of the business leaders in town. And uh, obviously, you alluded to the economy, what's going on. I, I've been here for over 30 years, and I know uh, I've never seen it as bad as it was in the 08, 09 time when we had the crash. It was pretty bad at, at 9-11. Uh, but I think it's worse now than it was then. Our economy is really going to uh, take a hit. How much do you think, A, the Raiders coming will help the economy, and B, will you do anything fight-wise special, like putting a fight, say, at the big stadium uh, to try to you know, help uh, invigorate the economy when the, and when the state is open back up? Yeah, I, I think all of those things are going to help. I think when, when, when uh, things start getting back to normal, you're going to need as many things in this town as you can to, to bring tourists back. And uh, the Raiders should definitely help um, putting on big – first of all, things have to happen 
things have to all line up for the big fights to happen. Obviously, if Habib can beat Tony, Conor Habib would be the biggest fight, you know, ever. So a lot of things need to line up for that to happen. But yeah, the city needs to work hard on putting on events that are going to make people interested in coming back to Vegas. So you have had a uh, three-week hiatus. So you'll begin, or will have had a three-week hiatus. You'll begin uh, on uh, April nineteenth with uh, UFC. Or is it April eighteenth? Eighteenth. Yep. April eighteenth with UFC two forty-nine. Uh, that you're going to go back to your normal schedule after that, or you know, because states are still on lockdown and whatnot. How are you going to handle that? So the fights that were rescheduled, I need to knock them out. I need to get those fights, uh, you know, squeeze them in somewhere and get them done. Um, and then, yes, we, we will resume our, our, our regular schedule. Can you see some? And, and they might not, they, listen, they might be with no crowd. They might be somewhere else. They might not be where they were scheduled to be. I don't know. I don't know how this is all going to play out over the next several months. But these fights are going to happen, and I will, I will have them. I think Nevada's lockdown extends to mid-April. Uh, so when that happens, uh, and assuming it's lifted in mid-April, I, I would imagine, I've talked to a lot of boxing promoters who said that they're interested in putting on events at Apex to try to get things going. Will, will Apex be used a lot for not only your events, but say for other combat sports? It depends on what nights they want to go, because obviously my schedule is going to be pretty busy on, on Saturdays. You know, I'll have an event going on uh, all the time over there, um, especially, you know, to, to make up for these events that have already happened. They might be on a Wednesday and they might be on a Friday. They might be on a Monday. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I can't, but yeah, the, the apex would be available for other people if I'm not using it. So you could have multiple events in one week and we could see like, say the Woodley Edwards fight landing on a Wednesday and then a regular schedule fight on that Saturday type thing. Exactly. Okay. And do you, you know, Given the fact that you're going to put a lot of things, crunch them into a time space, you know, some fights that you had as main events, you know, maybe would you put on other cards if depending on how it falls around? I'm asking like, you know, will we see, I guess what I'm saying is, will we see these super cards come up where you kind of merge cards together and, and get guys, you know, say, get Francis Ngannou and, and, and uh, Rosenstrike against uh, uh, on the same card as Woodley and Edwards as an example? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think so. Anything is possible, uh, you know, after this. Uh, you know, yeah, anything's possible. We'll see how we'll see how it plays out. How likely is it that uh, Daniel Cormier will fight again, given the delay in the virus? You know, he was going to retire last year. And now he wants to get one more crack at the heavyweight title. And I always wonder for a guy who you, you always say if a guy ret wants talks about retiring, he should retire. Uh, Cormier, I guess, is the only one you've given the exception to. Um, but if Cormier beats Stipe in a rubber match, let's just say that happens for the sake of argument, all of a sudden John Jones pops up, and now you got, you know, when does Cormier get out of this? So what is your sense of Daniel Cormier's future in the UFC? Yeah, because usually when guys talk about retirement, they've lost a few in a row, they've dropped in the rankings or out of the rankings. Um, that's not the case with Cormier. You know, and Cormier is, 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 is when you look at him, all the things, Things that he's done and he's accomplished, I still believe he's one of the absolute best in the world in both weight divisions, light heavyweight and heavyweight. And he's just, you know, he's the type of person, and I get it because of all that he's accomplished, he's obsessed with the Stipe fight. So he wants to fight Stipe again. Um, Stipe was obsessed with the Cormier fight after Cormier beat him. And it's a great trilogy, man. Two great heavyweight <laughs> fighters, you know, doing it for the third time. It's, it's a fun trilogy. Is, as far as you know, is Stipe healthy? Stipe's getting better. Stipe's getting better. Stipe had a couple of problems um, th th that he's been overcoming. And, uh, you know, again, Stipe Miocic is another guy. If you look at Stipe, he, he has remained a firefighter his whole career because he loves it. He's passionate about helping people. He's a good guy. And uh, think about that. The money that he makes – being a firefighter, the benefit package that he has being a firefighter and the money that he's made, be, you know, being a, a UFC heavyweight champion or heavyweight contender, Stipe Miocic really doesn't need to do this anymore either. Right. It's what he loves to do. And, uh, and uh, that's, that, that's, that's the fight that needs to happen. You know, I talked to you a little bit yesterday about boxing, and I want to ask you this question, not if you're going to get into boxing, but you have looked carefully at boxing. You saw the economics of the sport. Do you believe that boxing can survive going forward in whatever new world order we have after the coronavirus, given its, the, its past economics? 
That's a great question. Um, you know, it's hard for me to, to I, I hate speaking negatively about the sport of boxing, other than the fact that it's a mess. We all know it's a mess and it needs to be fixed if it can be fixed. I, I will tell you, Kevin, I, you know, I told you guys that I would have a, a um, press conference last October and announce all, all these things. But as I have dove into this thing and started to look into the sport of boxing, the economics of boxing, that sport's a mess. It's, it's a mess and it's in big trouble. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it can be fixed. I wonder, you know, there's been, this is done, you know, Bellator has done this. Some other people have done it where they put on, you know, two rings, you know, a cage and a ring and they've had carts. Uh, would that, would you ever consider something like that? I, I think that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I think that's ridiculous. Okay. Maybe it appeals to some people. It's just, listen, I have, I have this box that I'm in and the way that I think fights should be done, how they should look, how the stuff should go. Sure. And I'm very stuck and set in my ways on how I believe it should be done. So um, a box and a ring is silly to me. Uh, I mean, an octagon and a ring is silly to me. A, a uh, concert at a fight is silly to me. And things like that. So the reason I ask you this, cause I was thinking do that stuff and maybe it works for them, but it's just not my thing. The reason I asked that question, you know, that that's not really my thing either. I'm not, I'm not so much into that, but the re I thought about it, you know, you had so many people, so many, so many of your fighters wanting to fight Manny Pacquiao, wanting to fight Mayweather. Uh, you have a deal with Mayweather going on right now, supposedly. I don't know if, you know, given the tragedies in his life, his, uh, uh, baby mama's uh, passed away. His uh, uncle has passed away. I, you know, maybe he's done fighting forever. But I just thought that might be a way to get, like, say, at the stadium, have a really big UFC card and also have a boxing card where you have a prominent UFC fighter fighting a prominent boxer because so many of your guys want to do that. So I believe that, you know, when, when you put on a UFC event or a boxing event, all the focus and attention should be on that one event. You know, you start with the main event, and then it trickles down into the card. And, you, you know, there's some great fights that are lined up. Like when I do, if you don't know, now you know, right. right? There's a couple of fights in there that people might not actually know about that you focus on and, and let people know and things like that. And same thing for a boxing match. And you, when you go to an event, right, any event, you have to be focused on – on, on what's happening on that card and excited about it. Right. It would be hard, you know, like when I went to, um, I just went to the last heavy, heavyweight matchup with Fury and Wilder. I was there. I was excited about Fury and Wilder and who's going to win and how's this going to play out and all these other things. And that's what you're focused on, right? When I go to a Rage Against the Machine concert, which I was supposed to next Monday, you're focused on the concert and the music and the things that are going to happen. And that's what you're excited and and, and, and passionate about that evening. You can't mix and mash all those things together. It no. just doesn't work. Okay. In my opinion. Got it. Maybe maybe somebody else could pull that off, but it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, I, I largely agree with you, although I think, you know, I mean, money-wise, it would be tough to be paying all these different salaries, but I was thinking if you had a Mayweather or had a Pacquiao that you could put in, then on top of a strong UFC card. Well, the other thing is, is you bring out a certain group of fans for each thing, too. Like, there was there was a D different group of people at Fury Wilder than would be at like, uh, you know, Khabib versus Tony. Right. Versus Connor versus Khabib. Or um, like I said, Rage Against the Machine. And right. these, these different things. You're going to bring out different groups of people for these different events. Like when we do pay-per-views, not all the, it's not all the same buyers. Right. The different fights. It's different buyers. You have that general group the hardcore fans that are going to buy almost everything. And then different types of fights bring in different types of people. What do you if think What do you think the crossover is between boxing fans and MMA fans? In other words, uh, like I I write both sports, so I have a sense of how big that is. Um, and it's I don't think it's as big as a lot of people think it is. But I'm curious what you think. You know, do you see a lot of people who identify as boxing fans buying your events? Well, these, these days, I think that the boxing demographic is much older. And much more European. Mm. Interesting. So that's not your fan base. No. Well, yeah, we we have a very big European fan base too, but not older. 
not the older Nemo, right? Right. Yeah. So that's where I'm. Uh, um, you know, I, I think we should tell that story, by the way, of 20 some years ago when you were at, your office was in the map room on uh, West Sahara and uh, we were grappling on the floor in your office. I, I think, you know, people people don't re don't know about that. Yeah, uh, my, my office was uh, the old map room in the Fertitta Enterprises building. There was maps and, you know, maps of land that they were looking to purchase and things right. like that. And I literally had a square desk with a phone on it. That, that was my office. And we called you in to try to educate you on the sport and tell you why you should be covering uh, the UFC. And, uh, you know, apparently it worked. You know, the funny thing was, like, I had watched UFC 1 through probably UFC 5 or 6. And then, uh, I don't know which show it was, but Emmanuel Yarbrough fought Keith Hackney. So you had a 600-pound guy fighting a 190-pound guy. And that's when I said, you know what, this is ridiculous. This is getting in the, you know, Haystacks Calhoun pro wrestling territory. And I, I didn't really watch it. And then it was right before... Uh, what if the Haystacks Calhoun fight was real? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, the 190-pound guy won. That was the other thing. Crazy. That fight's crazy. That was nuts. And then right before you actually purchased it, I actually got, because in the Nevada Commission, Mark Ratner, who now works for you, was uh, they were looking at uh, regulating uh, MMA at the point, and so there was some stuff going on. So I started watching it then. And my sense as a newcomer to MMA at that point was it was bad boxing. Like a lot of it was bad boxing. And I did. And so that's where it, once I appreciated the ground game, I think that that's what uh, what made me a fan. Like I, I'm a huge MMA fan now. I love it. Um, but back in the day when I saw the I didn't understand what was happening on the ground and grappling and it was tough. So to your credit, you and I were grappling and then you set me up with uh, Frank Mir and uh, and uh, Scott Adams. I don't know if you're and Sean Shelby. The, and we and I grappled with them too. So it was pretty funny uh, in those days. I thought people would get a kick out of that. Yeah, I mean, that that was what made me the perfect guy to sell this thing was because I was a hardcore boxing guy who became an enlightened when I learned right. about the sport and, and, and really got into it because I used to say the same thing. These guys have terrible hands and this ever. And then I, I got in there and grappled. And when I took my first leg kick, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ever want to feel that again, um, but yeah, it, it's it's. Uh, I Lorenzo and I felt like the way that we were brought over into the into the mixed martial arts world. If if you could educate everybody that way, right? They see the light and realize, wow, this really is an incredible sport with incredible athletes. And thank God we were right. I'll end that segment with with just this comment. You know. The first time uh, when when you got sanctioned in Nevada, um, I went to lunch with uh, Joe Silva, your former matchmaker, Lorenzo, and there were a couple PR PR folks around. And I think you know that th there was a strategic mistake because Lorenzo did not have the ability that you have to kind of get somebody passionate about what's going on. You know, Lorenzo's a genius, and I've known Lorenzo. He was one of the first people I met when I came uh, to Nevada many years ago. I think he was in college at the time. Um, but you have that ability and you had the ability to kind of get somebody else into it. And so I was with him and I said, hey, I'm going to cover this because anything the Fertitta family is doing is significant in Las Vegas. So I took it seriously because of him. But I didn't until you and I actually got together and started, you know, doing the learning the ground game and, and teaching me. I think that your ability to do that was what made you the perfect person for the job you have. Thank you, Kevin. Look at that. See, so we got an endorsement. So let, let's wrap this thing up. It's uh, been going on uh, a long time. Let's go to January 1st, uh, 2021. Do you think the UFC is in better shape, the same shape or worse shape than it is right now as we fight this coronavirus? What's that question? January 1st of 2021. Is the UFC better off than it is yeah. now or the same, or is it slide back a little bit because of the struggles with financially with the coronavirus? Well, what I'm hoping is this, 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 not just the United States, not just the state here, but the world is going to bounce back from this quickly. I'm, uh, that's what I'm hoping. Um, and, uh, and, and life will get back to normal. And hopefully some, you know, the, the type of panic that's going on right now never happens again in our right. lifetime. So. Right. Um, yeah, I, I would say, so listen, 2019 was an incredible year, 
Uh, I saw some, it was an incredible year for us. I saw something on Instagram that was hilarious where it said, hey, 2019, I take back everything bad I ever said about you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, hopefully we snap back from this. But regardless of what this state, the country, or the rest of the world, you know, does, the UFC is going to, I promise you, we're going to march on. We're going we're gonna to put on events. Whether there's fans in it, not in there, or whatever, we're going to continue to march on. And, and uh, <clears throat> me and my team will fight through this, and, and we will hold our schedule this year. Every fighter, everybody that works for me will all make money, get paid, and, and life will be as normal as possible. You've had me. no layoffs, right? I haven't laid off one person. Okay. Nobody's been laid off. Fights have both been postponed. All these fighters that are under contract with me will get one, two, or three fights this year, four, whatever they want, you know, whatever, however many fights the fighters want to fight, they will get. My staff will work. Uh, all the independent contractors that work for me will work. Everybody will get what they expected in, in, in 2020. As we wrap this up, it's uh, we're recording this on March 24th, I believe today is. Uh, when do you expect to announce the, the location uh, of Tony and Habib? This week. Sometime this week. Okay. Sounds good. Dana, I appreciate you as always. Great stuff. Likewise, my friend. Have a great day. You too. Appreciate it.